Welcome to this festive edition of Punchline's television's answer to Christmas Eve in the workhouse. Now... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, who gave you that? Is this a plot? <laughs> OK, uh, never mind. We do have our own little bundle of Christmas goodies here on Punchline's. We have, for example, our own little Christmas pudding. That's so-called because he's small and extremely fruity. Here's David Hamilton. Say hello to David. Oh, here. There he is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I must say, I, I love Christmas, Terry. I mean, Lenny. Um, <laughs> I, I love Christmas. I remember this time last year, yeah. I was standing under the mistletoe waiting for a kiss. I was still there at Easter, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> and, of course, we've got our own two Christmas crackers here on Punchlines. We have Faith Brown and Pearly Gates. How about a big welcome? Yes. Yeah. television, my pearly. Hurry, my darling, your time of the year, eh? Oh, not exactly, Linny. Why is that? I keep dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and Faith, how are you, my love? I'm fine, Linny. Fine. What's Santa Claus going to bring you? Well, you know, darling, what I want, I think this year I want something very simple. You. No, <laughs> darling. No. <laughs> no, darling, I forget that. What I want is something very simple, like a lock of your hair, darling. We well, could have a lock of my hair, darling, but it's gone a bit thin on the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Michael's up there. OK, ladies and gentlemen, time now to meet our two Christmas Eve contestants. And on my right, and give them a nice warm round of applause, say hello to Sean Lebrum and to Alison Tessier. There we are. <laughs> ladies first. Ladies first, and let's say hello to Alison. Alison comes from Haywards Heath in Sussex. Uh, you've been married for seven years, Alison? Yes? To David, who's an accountant? Yes. Yeah. Does he boss you about the housekeeping? No. no. He's good about it? Yeah. Doesn't check your accounts? OK. No. And he says there used to be a former hairdresser. Now you work in a local hospital. And in your spare time, you are a busy girl. He says you do aerobics, darts. You've just joined a football club. And you're learning to ski. My word, you are busy, aren't you? Even though you're afraid of heights and you hate the cold. Yeah. Do you want to ski? We tried it on the snow. Year. Last year, yes. Only yes? once. Where did you go? Austria. You fall down? Yes. Are <laughs> <laughs> so you going to continue trying? Yes. Right. Okay. And over there we have uh, we have Sean from and you're 25, Sean? Yeah. Yes, yeah. from uh, Northampton. And you're a former policeman. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes. And uh, he says here that at the weekends you help out with a majorette group called the Twirlettes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I can't imagine that. A big fine fellow like Sean going up and saying, hello, I'm a toilette. Yeah. <laughs> fine. Uh, and he says you used to belong to uh, an amateur dramatic, a dramatics group, but what happened there? Well, I was moving about, being in the police force, and it sort of just moved about and sort of left different places, and I never took it up again. I see. But you haven't altogether given up show business, have you? No. Not really, no. Because it says on my little card here that you, you like doing impressions. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like a few, this yeah. Christmas Eve, Sean, tonight, tonight. Come here, give us your best impression. Come on, let's have a look at it. <laughs> Come on, Sean. You stand there. You're the star of the show now. Give us your impression. Go on. Just got to interest me. Oh, blimey, he's got the props as well. Let's have a look. <laughs> Rock on, Lenny, I'm really <laughs> special punchline guests tonight who are going to help Sean and help Alison play punchlines. A warm round of applause for lovely Diana Dawes and Chris Biggins. And before you say anything, no quips about fairies on the Christmas tree. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no jackets. I nice, can't isn't it? believe that. Let's have a look at that jacket. It Good. lights up. It lights up. Can you see? Look at that. All these. Uh, Wonderful. I said, I said we look like Liberace's left and right hand keyboard. <laughs> oh, no, he looks like. He looks like Black for Illuminations, only bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let's go. 
Yeah, well, it's Christmas with Di. Di, how are you, my love? I'm you very look, well indeed. You Thank look you. look terrific. I Thank must you. say that. So yeah. do you. Thank you. It doesn't seem but five minutes ago that I was doing this show Christmas last year. That's absolutely true. You did the Christmas show last year. But it year. was more than five minutes ago, and a heck of a lot's happened this year. That's right. Yeah. Looking well, though. I'm fine. Good yeah. to hear that. Yeah. You look tremendous. Lovely okay. to be back. Shall we do it? Yes. Why not? We will. Indeed? Let's hear it. Punchlines, please. Right. Show everybody your bloomers. <laughs> Shall I give you a nice big punch? You can have a muffin for tenpence. What you think of me beanstalk? <laughs> I can see what you've got in your stocking. <laughs> I damaged it pushing it through the letterbox. <laughs> Would you mind replacing my G-string? <laughs> if we start too quickly, I fall over backwards. <laughs> well, it does look like being a Merry Christmas, doesn't it? Who's going to go first? Sean, you won the toss. See if you can find me the punchline to this. At his Christmas party, David Frost smiled at Anna Ford. What did he say? David Frost to Anna Ford. Number six. You say number six, and that's Barbara. What did David say to Anna? I damaged it putting it through the letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good evening and welcome. <laughs> Unfortunately, not true. Uh, Alison, waking up on Christmas morning, Dennis Thatcher said to Margaret. Number two. Dennis to the Prime Minister, and that's Wincy Willis, number two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's all right, darling. Just going to sleep, you know, I'm tired, I get it this time now. <laughs> Shall I give you a nice big punch? Dennis Thatcher to Margaret Thatcher. Should I give you a nice big punch? I'd love that to be right. Uh, <laughs> Diana, Dick Whittington turned to the pantomime dame and said, Dick Whittington to the dame. Oh, dear. Uh, number one? You say one. Dick Whittington to the dame. Michael Reed, Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> Bully. <laughs> I can see what you got in your stocking. I can see what... Oh, I see the way you were thinking. Dick Whittington, see what you got in your stocking. No, no. I wasn't at all. <laughs> I was just trying to cover up the fact you made a cock-up. Yes! Uh -huh. Christopher! It's me. First time for you, my boy. Yes. What did the postman say to the housewife? Ha ha! Postman to a housewife? I think this could be the first one I get right. Number six. You say number six? Barbara. The postman to the housewife. Yeah. What about it? He <laughs> <laughs> might well yet. have said that as well, yes. I damaged it pushing it through the um, whatever the letter box. The letter box is absolutely right. Damaging it pushing it through the letter box. We're off, sir, Christopher. Ten points and we stay with your side. Uh, the baker. Alison looked at his customer and said, a baker. Mm. Number seven. You say number seven, that's Diddy David Hamilton. You can have a muffin for tenpence. Have a muffin for tenpence. <laughs> Way, there we go. We're on a roll. 20 points to nil. Chris Biggins, Rod Stewart, looked yes. at his guitar maker and said, Rod Stewart. Oh! <laughs> Rod Stewart. Did. Rod Stewart. He did, yes. <laughs> no, I have a feeling. That, that little Santa Claus up there, number three. You think that Bob Terrell G's might tell you what Rod Stewart, the man who's never been the same since he sang Do You Think I'm Sexy at the Seamers Mission, <laughs> <laughs> might have looked at his guitar maker and said, Bob Would Tarrell you G's, mind replacing my G string? Would you mind replacing my G string? You're a good player. You've never done as well as this, Chris. Wonderful. Excellent. It must be the jacket. Yeah, it is. It's mm. giving me confidence. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, I've lots of other things. Too. Yes. <laughs> Alison, climbing on his sleigh, Father Christmas said to his reindeer. <laughs> Apparently, Father Christmas does talk to reindeer. Um, <laughs> what does he say? Number five. You say number five, Father Christmas to his reindeer, and that's <laughs> Gary Wilmot. <laughs> Show everybody your bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> Little bloomer for Alice, but never mind. Sean, uh, we're back to David Frost and Anna Ford. Now you can confer because we've asked all the questions. What did David Frost say to Anna Ford? Oh. Flawed, yes, it's all right. <laughs> Number eight, please. Number eight, David to Anna Ford and Pearly Gates. If we start too quickly, I fall over backwards. If we start too quickly, I fall over backwards. <laughs> They're all beginning to sound right, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, Christopher, Christmas morning again. And yes. Dennis Thatcher is still turning to Maggie and saying what? Oh, dear. I don't think you do know what this is. Come along, Alison. It's Christmas. You should know this. Number one. Number one. You number think one. We're going for number one. You think Dennis might say to Margaret? Go ahead, Mike. I can see what you've got in your stocking. Of course, Christmas stocking, Maggie Thatcher. There we go. There we go. Correct. 40 points.
You stick with your side, because you, your, your side is sort of pacing I yourself. I know, I'm well aware of You're it. waiting to swoop, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes. 40 nil. Right, Dick Whittington, Alison. The pantomime dame. What did he say? Think about pantomime dames. Number four. You think that Dick Whittington might have said, Faith? What do you think of me being stark? No. Wrong pantomime. <laughs> no. What are you laughing at? <laughs> no, it was Dick Whittington. Oh, I see. Different, <laughs> different pantomime altogether. <laughs> Leave me alone, oh, Chris. <laughs> Right, right, Santa Claus, what does he say to his reindeer? Oh, same thing that David Frost said about a ribbon, I should think. Um, what does he say to his reindeer? Two. Number two, Wincy. You think David... Not David. You say that Father Christmas said to his reindeer, Wincy. Shall I give you a nice big punch? Shall I give oh, you a nice no. big punch? Oh, no. No, of course not. As if you do that to a reindeer. We're over to uh, Chris again. Oh, yeah. Yes, David Frost to Anna Ford. At the Christmas party. Well... Well, we think it might be number two. Yes, you think it sure. might be yes. number two, David Frost to Anna Ford? Shall I give you a nice big punch? Absolutely, okay. a nice big punch. <laughs> and Anna Ford said, get lost and threw a glass of wine in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Alison, uh, we're back to Dick Whittington again, who's saying to the pantomime dame... Number three. Dick Whittington to the pantomime dame, Bob Carroll G's. Would you mind replacing my G-string? Would you mind replacing my G-string? See, you forgot that was Rod Stewart. Sean, over to you. Come on, let's get a point, yes, Sean. Come on, let's Climbing go. on his sleigh, Father Christmas to his reindeer. Great, isn't it? Do you think? Look at those impassive faces. You won't number get a of them. You number say eight. number eight, and Pearly Gates will tell you that Father Christmas said... <laughs> if we start too quickly, I fall over backwards. Of course he would. <laughs> you did it. Ten points on the board. Fifty-ten. Final question this round, yeah. and it's Dick Whittington again. Oh, not again. Yes, he's now about 600 miles from London. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Dick turns to the pantomime dame and says... I know, I, I know, I know it. It's number ahead, five. Love. It's definitely number five. It's definitely number five, Gary oh, Wilmer. Uh, <laughs> show everybody your bloomers. Yeah. Show everybody your bloomers. Well done, guys. <laughs> Good round. Uh, Who is guilty of having the red herring then? <laughs> um, yes, what do you think of my beanstalk? She needs help. Right, um, second game, good game. Uh, we give you all our punchlines and then we all change places. But you have to remember where the punchline was, so let's do it. Punchlines, please. <laughs> Not amused. <laughs> Come up and see me sometime. Here's another fine mess you got me into. <laughs> Tickled. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I have the faintest idea what's going on. <laughs> All right, change places. And I, I want to wish you the best of luck with this round because I haven't got a clue what's happening. Okay, uh, you tell me. Queen Victoria is <laughs> Queen Victoria is famous for saying what? Number eight. You say, oh, that sounded quite confident. Didn't Queen Victoria it? said, Mike Reed, we are not amused. Very well. well You are not amused. Mind you, we get a lot of that in this show. Uh, <laughs> Christopher, yes. a commanding lead, and Mae West said what? Mae West, famous actress. Mae West. Oh, I, I think number seven, I you think You think Mae West... <laughs> oh, you are literally... Face. They made you do that face. Yes. 
for the benefit of those watching in black and white, it's in your favour. Right. <laughs> Sean, Sean, please don't pick seven. What did Lassie say to Rin Tin Tin? Lassie. Number Rin two. Tin Tin. Lassie said to Rin Tin Tin, Bob Carroll G's. <laughs> Correct. Got a good point. What's that? Look, I just. I just made that out of a balloon. Look, it was a little dog. Oh, oh you are clever. <laughs> Actually, it's a swan. A swan? <laughs> I can make a dog. Is it a swan, is it? I can make Has a it been dog. ill? No, well, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's going... Oh. Uh. <laughs> do, you want to see the... do you want to see the dog? Yes, I'd love to see a dog, yes. Look. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh, that's, that's excellent. It excellent. can fly. Yeah. <laughs> Question right. Now this is this is an interesting question for you, Di. Is it? Because you actually did the Just William series, didn't you? Yes. So you will undoubtedly yes. remember, without Violet any question, Elizabeth. what Violet Elizabeth used to say to William. What did she say? I'll scream and scream until I'm sick. Yes, yes, she did say that. Yes, but, Bonnie Langford, was it? But you have to pick it out of there, you see. And it's <laughs> and it's and it's number four. You say four, Gary. I'll scream and scream. <laughs> Sean, where, what, <laughs> Sean, what would you most likely hear Tarzan say? <laughs> Of keeping the program on the air, <laughs> could you choose any box? But seven. Yeah, you have your choice. I have number seven. You have number seven. <laughs> In that case, Miss Brown will show us. Do I have could to? You do? Do? No, could you just tell us what did right. Tarzan say? Oh. You're only ten points behind. Let's hear what you think Harry Seacombe says when uh, he meets someone. Oh. Uncle Harry, what does he say? Well, I'm going to try number five. You try I don't think it number is, five and says that Harry Seacombe says, Wincy. Have you ever been tickled? Harry Seacombe. <laughs> you can't do Ken <laughs> Give your clues away. Wicked girl. Right. <laughs> Alison. <laughs> what does Ken do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we better go through with it. You like that, don't you, Biggins? You I love that. Do. Yes, it's made all my jackets lights up. I know. Go on, tell me, Alison. What does Ken Dodd say? Five, number five. Five, number five. But you've got to do an impression, Wincy. Do an impression. Ken Dodd. Come on, let's see it. <laughs> Have you ever been tickled? Very good. Thank you. Have you ever been tickled, Missy? Right. Yes. I, I'm, actually, I'd like to move back to the top because I feel a bit like a before picture to face after sitting down here. <laughs> Christopher. Yes. May West smiled and said what? And I should be expecting another impression from somebody here. May yes. West smiled and said what? Well, let's see how. Let's, I think it's number six. You yes. think it's number six, on, David? David what what did May West say? Your impression. <laughs> Come up and see me sometime. <laughs> The final question. How are the scores? 80 to 50. Uh, Alison, uh, let's see if you can find for me what Harry Seacom says when he meets people. Sir Harry, Lord of the Realm. What does he say? One, one, three. No, 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 no. Three. Number three. You think that Harry Seacom says, Pearly Gates? Here's another fine mess you got me into. Oh, <laughs> comedian. Your turn, Sean. Step in and get 10 points. Harry Seacom. What again? Let me, <laughs> let me give you a clue. Think of the days of the goose. What did Harry used to oh, do? Oh, number one. You think number one, and that uh, is Barbara Kelly. What did Harry used to do? A good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, nothing personal to say, nothing personal to anybody. Well, my never, impression never of a raspberry. It turns out more like a gooseberry, but <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. British television and Barbara <laughs> Kelly blowing a raspberry. She was, can't do it. It wasn't a good one. Was blow me a good raspberry. Me blow you one? Yeah. 
about the town. Everybody can do it all right. together. Uh... What's an educational show? OK, who had, who had the red herring? I did. What was it, uh, my darling? Here's another fine mess you got me into. That's quite right. That was a red herring. And the scores stand at 60 to die into Sean and 80 to Alice and Christopher. And we'll take a break now while I ask David Hamilton exactly what happened to the Radio 2 Christmas Club money. <laughs> Punchlines part two. We had a slight problem during the commercial break. Faith Brown had to run home quickly because her Christmas puddings were boiling over. <laughs> She's back with us now. <laughs> and we're ready to play it. 80 points to 60. And this is where we double the points. Uh, because we don't tell you where the punchlines is, you have to guess. Sean, see if you can catch up. Find me the punchline to this. Cyril Smith smiled at Shirley Williams and said, Cyril Smith to Shirley Williams, pick me a punchline. Number seven. You say that Cyril said to Shirley, David. Sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, I'm off. Don't worry about that. <laughs> go ahead, Faith. Uh, I'd like to see your band parts. Cyril Smith said to Shirley Williams, I'd like to see your band parts. I think not. Right, Christopher. Napoleon Bonaparte smacked his lips and said to Josephine. Oh. Napoleon to the Empress Josephine. What did he say? Number four. You say number four, Gary. I'll take a long run and jump on. I'll take a long run and jump on. How very French. Uh, die. Landing his helicopter, Prince Andrew said to Ku Stark. <laughs> it should be interesting anyway. Uh, number three. You say the Prince Andrew said to Ku Stark as he landed his helicopter, Pearly. I'm having trouble with my undercarriage. Having trouble with my undercarriage. <laughs> And sure, musical director smiled at Dolly Parton and said, Musical director to Dolly Parton. I'll have number four. You have number four, and that is young Gary. Oh, he said, uh, I'll take a long run and jump on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Alison, what did the bobsleigh pairs champion say to his girlfriend? Number two. <laughs> The audience think you might not be right, but according to Alison, the bobsleigh pairs champion said to his girlfriend, Bob, you won't see it without a microscope. <laughs> the biology professor turned to his student and said, biology professor, think carefully. Number two. I shouldn't be at all surprised. Go ahead, Robert. You won't see it without a microscope. Of course, biology professor. And a microscope. 20 points. You see, suddenly you're in front. Uh -huh. Sean, what did the scoutmaster say to the cub mistress? Um, scoutmaster to the cub mistress? He smiled at her Number winning. six. And you think he said to her, go ahead, David. Let's have a dib, dib, dib. Dib, dib, dib. Right. Well, my, well, look at that. 120. <laughs> Taking down the Christmas decorations, the butler <laughs> said to the Duchess. Well, I don't think it's been said here yet. <laughs> I'm going to try number eight. You think that the butler said Mike's to the... looking lonely over there. Oh. No. Oh. You're right, aren't you, Mike? You tell us what yeah. the... As he took down the decorations, what did the butler say to the Duchess? Don't know. <laughs> They've got to come down before midnight. Sean, Cyril Smith smiled at Shirley Williams. You can confer now because we've asked all the questions. Cyril Smith to Shirley Williams. And you only need one more correct answer. Barbara You're Kelly. This week's champion, you one. say Barbara Kelly. What does Cyril say to Shirley, Barbara? I hope one day you'll be liberal. I hope one day you'll be liberal. What can I say to you? I mean, you did awfully well until then. Then they came with a rattle at the end and beat you. Never mind. Hope you've enjoyed Thank yourself. You. And will you take as our Christmas present to you half a dozen bottles of champagne? Yes. Enjoy that. <laughs> Drink it over the holiday and have a good time with Thank your husband. You. And of course, yes, a round of applause indeed for Alison. And Sean, you're this week's
things will never be the same with the twirlettes, will they? Yeah. Right, here we go. Eight punchlines, no red herrings, eight simple answers, as many as you write. Get as many right as you can, and we'll give you a lovely Christmas present of our champion prize. Let's do it. Punchlines, please. Christmas cards. Mince pies. Kisses. <laughs> Christmas puddings. Fairies. Paper hats. Crackers. <laughs> Turkeys. There we are, all various things associated with the festive season. Do you like to hear them again? No, no. You should do it straight up. OK, here we go. Let's see how well you do. Uh, you get what fattened up for Christmas? Number eight. You think they fatten up for Christmas, Mike Reed? <laughs> Turkeys. Turkeys is right. There's a good start. <laughs> OK, Sean, when you pull them, they go off with a bang. Faith Browns. Faith I mean, Faith Browns. <laughs> Pull them. Crackers! Yes! <laughs> Crackers is right. Okay, Sean, they arrive in envelopes from friends and relations. Number three. Number three is Pearly Gates. Christmas cards. Christmas cards. Three out of three. What sit on the top of Christmas trees? Number five. Number five, the top of Christmas trees, Wincy Willis. Fairies. Fairies is right. This is easy, isn't it? You can pour brandy over these and set fire to them. Number six. Number six, David Hamilton. Mince pies. Oh, good try. Never mind, you can still win the champion prize if you get every remaining question right. You get these under the mistletoe. Number one. Number one, Barbara. Kisses. Kisses is right. Well done. <laughs> They're often worn at Christmas parties. Number two. Number two, Bob Carroll G's. Paper hats. Paper hats is right. <laughs> One more, Sean. And you take away champion prize. You fill them with mince meat. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. Had to be. Go ahead. Mince pies. Mince pies is right. <laughs> Seven out of eight and a slight hiccup and got through. Well done. You take away super prize of a huge Christmas hamper and half a dozen bottles of champagne. You have a terrific Christmas. <laughs> Thank you to a wonderful loser and a warm thank you to Alison and of course a very special thank you to, to my two punchline star guests tonight to Diana Dawes and to Chris Biggins <laughs> and let's have a Christmas farewell for my punchline pals you ready folks a one two we, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas. we wish you a Merry Christmas we wish you a Punchlines will be back next week at the later time of 7pm.